What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another provocative episode of The Center Beacon. Why is it provocative? I'm not wearing any pants. Or am I? Sleep in fear. Anyways, uh, I'm actually, I'm wearing pants. They're shorts. Uh, speaking of shorts, uh, does anyone remember skorts? I remember skorts. Uh, not squirts, that's something else. Skorts were a thing when I was a kid. Uh, I'm on a tangent. I have an app that tells me I'm on a tangent. It just notified me. We're talking about uh, my favorite builds, and this is one of them, the Orkin Aphid Griffin. I love this thing. You can see the damage. I put it up on there. Potential damage. Potential damage. That's if everything lands every time perfectly, which it won't. But I love this bot. Uh, I'm all about flexibility, and the Griffin platform offers flexibility virtually like no other bot does, and you really can get a lot of uses on a lot of different maps out of this thing. Um, you can get out of harm's way, obviously, with the jump. You have the ability to uh, kind of do like the, you know, the, I don't know, the, the death button leap, you know, that we're all pretty familiar with. You can jump in on somebody and smash them. You can jump away from somebody and smash them. You can, uh, you know, uh, jump back behind cover to get out of the way of, you know, potential damage. Uh, I mean, it's just really the, the possibilities are endless, and I've seen these things uh, used really creatively, really uh, professionally. Everybody throws around that pro word all over the internet. Everybody's pro something, um, and I really have seen a lot of players truly professionally run this beast and i mean and, and, and i have other favorite configurations for this thing too but the aphid orkin if you haven't tried this thing you probably have because i think it's gotten around there at this point that this is a pretty good combo even post aphid nerf uh, if you recall recently they did dial back the accuracy on the aphids somewhat um but not the damage so again you know if you're a pro mlg pro y'all um, if you're a pro and you know how to thring, uh, fling those aphids, uh, if you get most of them to land, they still hit pretty hard. That was the main thing I was worried about with the aphid nerf is that, man, if they reduce the damage or something, you know, it's like, uh, you know, previously in the early days, just two aphids really wasn't worth it for me. Maybe some of you had success. I did not. But ever since they buffed them, they were really nice. Um particularly when they had the, uh, you know, the insane accuracy that they had. Uh, but even post-nerf, uh, they are still really, really valuable, and that's what these clips here are going to kind of demonstrate. Uh, some of my favorite things to do with the aphid griff. Um, I'm running with some uh, some clan bros right here. You can see right there, uh, I detect splash damage, and I get out of the way. Not the most graceful leap, but, you know, I barely took any damage and I was able to get out of it. So we're kind of on a right side defensive uh, scheme here. And, you know, our mission is just to keep these dudes back. And I've got my splash there. You know, I don't got to kill anybody necessarily. I just got to keep them from getting to the beacon. I can hurl aphids around the corner, which, again, I am not the best at. But I have seen guys, uh, particularly in faster bots, not necessarily this one, but like, say, a Galahad, you can change directions so quickly They'll just leak out, throw an aphid, and they leak back in, and you don't hit them. Now, with the griffin, it's harder to do because he does his little, like, uh, you know, country two-step maneuver there where it takes him a second to change direction. But you can see, uh, still uh, incredibly effective. You're throwing the aphids. you got the, the two orkins. I put up the potential damage earlier. Refer back to that uh, if you didn't get it the first time. But two orkins still put down a hell of a lot of hate. Uh, you can really make some people unwelcome with just two organs that are maxed out. Again, this is all max stuff. Um, I think I put that up earlier on one of the slides. But bear that in mind. And, and just as like a little uh, fun fact, footnote, whatever, uh, I really don't like organs below, like, say, level 11. I don't feel like they really are worth it virtually until maxed. Um, it's just one of those that just it doesn't seem to really do a whole lot till you get those boys near max so see you can, you can see here the right side push that they sent our way uh didn't really amount to too much we were able to kind of stall that so i leak over into the center and you know this is great because i have the aphids with that 350 meter range uh you know i can throw those guys across the center uh, you saw me hit that leo or whatever that was earlier i can come in here and and, and you know put some uh put some hatred on this guy um, and once you get up all in these little notches right here off to the side of the center beacon, you know, it's like a little map strategy, it starts getting nasty for the other team. Um, 
And again, no offense towards these fellas. I think this was like a random squad or whatever, but just as far as, you know, showing the, demonstrating the ideas uh, through this clip, that's really all I'm talking about here. Um, but the Aphid gives you that versatility. This is really, I know I like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a naysayer of hybrid bots. You know, sometimes I catch a little flack for that on the interwebs, but uh, this is really one of the few hybrid bots that I really, uh, I think, you know, has some merit. You know, typically I like to run same, same for, say, like damage type or particularly range, reload time. I mean, these are all common sense things. But with this guy, you really can, uh, you know, uh, take advantage of, you know, the, the difference in reload times the 350 meters versus 300 meters range for the Orkin, you know, and the Aphid respectively. Uh, and you can see in that last clip there too, you know, I was even able to ding up that Griffin that jumped in on me pretty good before he finally finished me off. So that was, you know, that was a pretty solid bot. Uh, here we're playing a very good clan. We encountered these guys a lot. These guys are really talented. Um, and this is just, again, some more footage of how I like to maneuver the Griffin. Again, not the world's greatest uh, by any stretch. Um, but this bot, uh, really makes it easy. Um, you got a lot of options. Um, if you can try to save your jump until you absolutely need it. Cause there'll be those times where, you know, you kind of always preach, you know, keep track of like where red team is. I know it's like, that's obvious, right? But you know, if you can kind of in your mind, keep the spatial awareness of like, you know, where did that guy go? Where is he now? Where has he moved in the 15 seconds? I haven't looked at him, save that jump for when, uh, you know, one of those uh, kind of escapes your attention for a few seconds, you know, and you're like, where the hell did that guy come from? That's when the jump really comes in handy. So I try not to use it unless I really, really need it um, because it's, it's like a get out of jail free card. You see here, wait for this guy to land, start firing him up. Uh, you know, he gets taken out by my buddy there. Uh, again, just this is uh, similar to that first clip, just uh, playing defense on the right side here. Uh, trying to hold beacon advantage and this is a great bot to do it in and I don't remember I don't know if I have some other clips in here or not but uh, there's a couple other maps too uh, I know I have at least one other clip from a different map that I really enjoy this guy for especially the uh, the center center beacon not a shameless plug I can't help it I don't know what else to call it um, uh, center beacon defense on say like Yemen Tau. That clip is coming up in a second. Um, but uh, a lot of dead city clips here. Um, so uh, you know, try this thing out if if you haven't uh, given him his uh, you know his uh, his due you know proper respect. Uh, really handy. Um, and then here, this is just like a little bit of, uh, you know, just trading aphids. That's the great thing, again, about, uh, okay, so the, the build, you know, we've talked about the platform, but the aphids themselves really lend themselves to this type of, like, you know, uh, we're up on beacons here, but a, a lot of times we're not, and it's, you know, it's close. It's 3-2 us, 3-2 them, and nobody's really going to get into that center and make it out alive, so, you you know, you just play this little game of throwing aphids, you know, back across different obstacles, and the other great thing I should probably mention about uh, the aphid-griffin combination is that since the aphid nerf occurred, you'll notice that they fly a, a much like shorter, lower trajectory. Um, they, they won't pop up and over like they did uh, like last month or whatever it was prior to the adjustment. Um, not really. I mean, you know, we, we throw nerf around like it's this evil thing. It was more of a tweak. I don't really see it as like a like a, a awful uh, you know uh, nerf. It just it was a little redonkulous. They dialed it back, and I and I think we're sitting pretty good now. But uh, by utilizing the Griff's jump, you can compensate for the fact that the aphids don't fly the same way they used to, and you can get that elevation you need to throw the things over top of a building. Or here you can see with uh, this is one of my favorite uses for this bot platform defense. Um, you guys who play Yamantau at a high level, you know how this, this map goes and it's a real bear and it's kind of like whoever gets to the platform and fortifies it first, you know, uh, and hangs on to it and keeps feeding, you know, proper bots and, and brawlers and, and, you know, uh, appropriately equipped platforms, uh, to the central beacon. Um, they usually hang on for the win. And this is one, you can see my buddy's got Griffins there, death button. Plasma, aphids, all good combos. 
and you can kind of just chill down here at the bottom of the ramp, and the Griff jumps so high. See, I throw the aphids in there, get a little damage. I think they got blocked by my buddy, and then whenever I choose to, I, I can jump, I can leap. I like to fire usually at the apex of the jump. I find it creates a, a slightly greater degree of accuracy. Um, I could totally be wrong, but it's it's a point A to point B in my mind, rather than you kind of see where I fired a little early in that clip, uh, not quite at the apex, and the rockets tend to have that like hook effect. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. I mean, obviously, if you get them all to land in the in the the on the target, then, then you keep on going, you keep on trucking the way that you're doing it. But that's what I like to do usually at the apex of the jump. But uh, in that last clip there, you can see where, where just, just how versatile and how effective that thing is, um, especially if you play the little like platform dance where they're not coming up because they know that you'll smash them. You're not coming up because they, you know, you know that they're going to smash you. So you just keep hurling aphids over the top. And if anybody does throw anything really heavy at you, like say a aphid patten, you just jump out of the way. So uh, that's it for this one. This is going to be a little bit of a series. Nothing super official, but my favorite builds, Aphid, Aphid Orkin Griffin. Uh, thanks for watching. I will see you next time at the Center Beacon.